Alex Zanardi, the man who brought so much excitement, so much charisma to this series and winning the championship for Ganassi Racing the last two years has gone to F1. But his rookie replacement, Juan Montoya, shows tremendous promise. When Juan Montoya made contact with Michael Andretti in the first turn, sending both drivers into the wall. Both came away from the crash okay, but then tempers flared between the two. Montoya was fined $5,000 and put on probation when card officials determined he took an unjustifiable risk. Carl Haas went to express his displeasure with Montoya when Chip Ganassi stepped in between the two to calm tempers. But Haas took exception and slapped Ganassi with his trademark cigar. Then, our Gary Gerald caught up with both Andretti and Montoya. Do you feel like everything is okay now between you and Michael after your conversation? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. I don't think why we cannot race side by side each other. Michael Andre looks inside of Montoya. This time he may in fact look at Montoya hang out there. Oh, they're so close as they come off the two. Montoya has courage. Andretti went down the inside. Now look at Montoya work on his teammate Bathur. They can accelerate at this point. Michael already is and looking for green. Green flag is out. Montoya ducks in again. Christian Fittipaldi slides to the inside, then to the outside. Now back to the end. Montoya alongside Michael. Montoya does it again as Montoya takes the lead off of turn one. This was on the restart. Oh, wow. Meanwhile, look at this. Great battle between Montoya and Andretti. This is good close stuff. This is what we want to see. And Montoya down in seventh place now, really beginning to it push on on Michael. Down towards the chicane. It's narrow down here. There's not much space. Montoya trying to go around the outside. And he does it. He goes around the outside of Andretti. But Juan takes it back. Montoya down inside. Montoya takes the lead of the race. Carso Marquez, a slower car just ahead. Michael darts out on the back stretch. Michael tries to get it down inside. Montoya's going to stay right there on the outside. The slower car is just ahead. Montoya. Now Andretti, and they almost touched. They may have touched. The slower car is going to be a factor as Montoya brings him to the line. And Montoya takes the Michigan 500. What a finish. Juan Montoya, this kid is a rocket. Expect fireworks. So do you go for it all here, or do you just stay in touch? Looks he like he's going to go for it. Whoa! Oh, darts right, darts left, goes back out right again. Look and out. gets caught. Whoa! He got caught, but it didn't matter. for a top five, uh, top four, uh, the car was free. Oh, Montoya gets way high. I'm, I'm sorry, Marty. Montoya tried to move on PJ, got way up, saved it, and back in. Go ahead, Marty. Please. I'm sorry. Montoya, he, he got high once again just a second ago. In that short interval while we were watching Jimmy Vassar. Look at this. Oh, how wow. does he do it? Paul, you know, you've only got so many lives, and when you use them up, you use them up. But what's happening there, I think, going down into turn one, he's pulling the car down really fast right on the entry, and when he does it, it's rotating the back, combined with the fact that he was running in the turbulence of Max Pappas in front of him. But still, it doesn't, it doesn't shake him at all. Most people would be hospitalized with cardiac arrest after doing that one time. He does it lap after lap after lap. Maybe conserving a little bit, as he has clean air in front of him. But right now, he can't conserve at all, Paul. Oh, Montoya struggles to control it as he comes down to the inside, tries to get alongside Tracy. Can't do it. Not happy with it. Juan Montoya will listen there as well. Reminder, the leaders last pitted on the 124th lap. Oh! Juan does that as if it's just part of the routine, and apparently for him it is. Last real natural terrain road course we were at Road America. Also, that race went caution-free. Whoa, look at that, a big sideways slide there for Juan Montoya. Is he trying? Paul, he's got, Montoya's got some of the fastest hands in the paddock. I think 
in another life he could have been one of the world's greatest pickpockets because we've seen him do things with his car that are just phenomenal. During qualifying, we saw great saves from another uh, from a number of the drivers, whether it's Pappas, Carpentier, but on a regular basis, lap after lap, Montoya hangs it out farther than anybody else on the circuit today. And the other thing about Montoya is everyone expected him to be good on the road courses. Well, he's won on a street course, he's won on an airport course, he's won on uh, the ovals too. So Montoya's adapted to the challenge of the kart series very, very quickly. Yes, of course, these are the sort of tracks that he was expected to shine on. He has shone just about everywhere he's this year. Oh, he's too so close. close! He's made contact with close. Pappis. Ah, he got it back together though. That was just breaking a fraction too late. Pappis was already on the brakes and they made slight contact. Now they may have got away with that. And Montoya had made it obvious he was staying there all the time. There's Max's move. Yes, he just made a little move initially to the outside and then came back in again. It didn't look too dramatic, but Montoya thought for a moment that he might have had a chance. But really, I think also he misjudged it a little bit on the brakes. 4-1 Montoya, and he is flying away from the field. A great drive once again by this Columbia. Nick. Ooh, he gets on the brakes there. A slower car, Robbie Gordon. He closed up so fast, didn't he, Ben? As well, and he's got past Greg Moore. You're on board with one Montoya sliding the car around on cold tyres. We know how effective he can be on those cold tyres. And what a driver's looking for is for the driver in front oh, of him. Wow! It's good up. It's a block. No problem. I can handle it. Whether or not I improved, I'm coming out of the pits or I'm on the start, especially on the start, might be very confusing. Every time I talk to Montoya, I'm impressed with the very real possibility that he has no idea how really good he is, fastest hands in the business. And when he stayed high, well, that ended up giving the whole thing because it gave a great toe to Montoya. Oh, Montoya almost loses it. He didn't look very happy there. As, uh, it looks as though he wasn't really communicating with his pits. Into the pits also comes Dario Franchitti. Look at Montoya. Through the flat-out kick. Well, it's not quite flat-out and cold. Look at the direction. Wow. Fantastic stuff. And you see how committed Montoya was. Now he's got a great opportunity again. But again, Castro Nevis has forced him down the outside. And he locks up. Can't make the move. We're on board with Juan Montoya, who's chasing after Fernandez for third position now. Look at the sideways for Montoya there. So he's sliding around a bit. Those tyres have done a fair bit of work, but it does show you that this harder compound tyre is certainly holding up well because he doesn't seem to be sliding around that much considering how many laps his tyres have done compared to fairly fresh tyres on Montoya's car. Uh, for, uh, just to make sure the tyre tire wear is not a problem, there is, of course, no tyre competition. Now Goodyear pulled out uh, a year ago, so they're not no longer part of the scene. There's Juan Montoya, his teammate, in fourth place. Vassar, in fact, talking about testing a NASCAR, but he had to get past it quickly to stay on terms with the leaders. Listen to the wheel spin from Montoya. Now, as the green comes out once again on the 31st of 85 laps, Tony Kanaan still the leader. Franchitti, second place. There's Franchitti. Come and take a look at Montoya. Montoya to the inside. Well, lets the back end go, catches it. And no fear, poster child at it again, Paul. This kid has nerves of steel. Nothing intimidates him. Now Montoya begins to join this fight behind Paul Tracy. And everybody gets bottled up. Oh, Montoya almost loses it in front of Michael. He looks to the inside of Tracy. Comes down to the inside of Tracy. He's going to try to pick two of them off. Frankini moves to the outside of Vassar, the leader. And I think Frankini's got boxed in there, Paul. I think you want to go down to the low side. He sits in eighth place. With the interval went from just over 10 seconds down to nine seconds flat. He's going to look down the inside into turn three. Oh, man, and he made it stick. That's one. He took it all the way off the course and almost comes back into Canaan. Should, should be, be right ahead. ahead. He should be right ahead here of Montoya, but he's on cold tires, don't forget. And that's what happened to Christian. Christian got out and, and had to try and hold off Montoya on cold tires, just unable to do it. Montoya makes a great move down the inside, pulls away, but now Frank Edy is the big one, whether he has managed to stay ahead and can hold him off. And then you see Christian went out wide, then he had to get out of the power, and that's where he lost all that ground.
Brilliant passing manoeuvre from Montoya. <laughs> now then, look at this. Another chance for Castro Neves. Oh, then it's uh, Blundell trying to get up to speed. And Castro Neves has got on the inside. And he's taken the lead from Montoya. Great. He snatched the advantage there. And they still got to make pit stops. Oh, and Hel Calia, Helia just defending the inside. And Jones has got round the outside into second place. <laughs> Fantastic stop. And they wheel bang, bang, wheels there. BJ Jones and Montoya. Montoya tries to dive down the inside. Of Juan Montoya making a move on Paul Tracy. Trying to go around the outside, and he's going to do it. Juan Montoya gets around the outside. They're still side by side in the second part of the S's, and he's gone through. He's done it again. Juan Montoya takes the lead of the race at Mid-Ohio, and the Ganassi driver has fought his way up from eighth position, got a great pit stop, moved up the order, and now he takes the lead of the race. Big battle further back on, and here it comes. Oh. Oh, look at that group. Oh! That was Montoya, I think, there, Paul, once again, getting, oh, it was... Behind him, Montoya, four seconds back. Down the back straightaway. Will Max Pappas become the third first-time winner this year? It sure looks that way. He runs out of fuel! He runs out of fuel! Can on screen pass! Well, yeah, Frankie right, really, really did put uh, Montoya under pressure. Look at those side by side. Now Michael Andretti trying to get back past Paul Tracy and Darren Frankini on the inside of Montoya. Frankini's down on the other one there. Tracy and Frank Andretti have hit each other. Is uh, I can see him watching out of the commentary box, coming out behind uh, Raul Bozell in the Eagle, and Montoya's got a chance to yep. go down the inside. Montoya into turn number one, and the crowd's on its feet here in the grandstand, cheering and shouting as Montoya goes. Frankini and retakes the lead. Brian Herder seems to be the latest guy in trouble. He was running along pretty happily in eighth and now lost the place last time around and is struggling now to say ahead of Jan Magnus. There goes there. Montoya. Montoya goes past Frankini. Makes it look very easy and in fact Frankini didn't really bother at this stage in the race to... Max Pappas and Montoya battle. Pappas gets around him. That's the second place for Pappas as he's working his way back to the lead. Now three and a quarter seconds behind the leader Fittipaldi. But here comes Montoya again. They use P.J. Jones. Oh, down on the apron. Montoya gets in. Wow, that is a really, really risky maneuver. You can see the car move underneath him. Montoya is making moves early. And a little bit of an advantage with his teammate sitting just ahead of him. Whoa. Goodbye, I got three of you. I'm gone. Quickest hands in the business. He's an amazing race driver. It had to be one of the two because you can see he's just very, now Montoya very slow now. gets him. Telling Paul Tracy to use the overtake button. That puts it in full rich, full advance on the Montoya, timing. Montoya, there goes Montoya. Montoya. And here he comes. Montoya's not been up at the front of the field since the 164th lap, but he spent a lot of time in second place. And Reddy stretches the lead to eight tenths of a second. Montoya goes alongside Frankini. At Tarso Marquez, the furl is a warning. The black will be an absolute. He's been called by cars. They're all over. Oh, here comes Montoya. Pinches very close to the wall. He goes side by side with Tarso Marquez down the back stretch. Marquez jumps on the brakes. Montoya very high in the corner. Absolutely gets around him finally. That was a huge move. We know how aggressive Montoya is. Quite a bit of problem. In fact, there have been a number of technical bulletins issued by especially Reynard as Montoya ducks inside. Going into turn one. One's car. Also, Sinji Nakano came in for pit service while we were away. But this is the key battle. Montoya Whoa. tried there. Oh, look you at him lose it again. You can see the snap coming off the last corner there. Jimmy right up behind him. Any other driver I know, Paul, Jimmy would makes be in the his pits. move. Jimmy comes to the inside. Montoya's still going to contest him. They go side by side. They come off of two that way. Montoya still has the position. How does that guy do that? Anybody I know, look at the back of the car moving around. Six turns. 
Unbelievable. Here comes Barron back into the fight as Montoya comes on Vassar. Well, whatever was wrong is now right. Well, I don't think so. I think it's just Juan Montoya. He really doesn't care what the car is doing underneath him. Take advantage also of the slipstream and Castro Neves there defending the inside line. Juan Montoya tries to go around the outside. Packing wheels, look at this, and they're still together as they come into the next corner. The Castro Neves has done it. Brilliant. Oh, great stuff. Brilliant driving by both men. There. Of Elio Castro Neves. Garcia getting out of everybody's way. Look at that side by side again, Montoya. This time he might have done it. Has he got enough of an advantage? Oh, no. He doesn't quite have it. That was as close as it's been so far. Race recap after 51 laps. The hairpin is ahead for Montoya. The green flag should come shortly thereafter. Keep an eye on Frankini in second place. Well, for that matter, Frankini heard of Fernandez and fit of Baldi. He snookered him, Paul. He absolutely snookered Dario Frankini. Unbelievable. Look at the lead that he's pulled out. Montoya from second position to Farron takes him way over to the pit wall. And then Montoya jumps out, sweeps wide, comes in ahead of him going into the festival curve, takes the lead and pulls away. And there's no doubt Montoya's a master of restarts. He didn't let the Farron get away, but watch what he does here, Paul. Drafts up behind the Farron, goes to the outside, and out breaks him on the outside going into the festival corners. What a brilliant move. Oh, the red colors of Team Ganassi. He's got Gilles de Ferran alongside him, and Montoya made an excellent getaway just now. I wonder if he's going to repeat that. Here we go, Ben. Building up to the start of the Cart Rio 200, round five of the 1999 FedEx Championship Series. It is the battle between Fittipaldi on the inside, Frank Kitty on the outside, and here we go, the green flag, and surely this time it's a clean start as they run down towards turn one for the first time in this race. Watch out for Montoya. Montoya's on the dirt on the inside. Montoya's going for the lead. Montoya into the lead. Has he gone in too fast? No. A beautiful passing manoeuvre from Juan Pablo Montoya, and it's Fittipaldi in second. And look at the Frank lead he's stretched up uh, from the second row. He's jumped out to a huge lead. Yeah. And it has a wall to hit. Now, here we go. We're getting ready to go green. De Ferran gets on it green, once again. Green, look green. at the restart from Montoya. Brilliant. He is so quick on these restarts, and Montoya is going for it, as you would expect. Montoya goes for it down the inside into turn one, but has he carried too much speed in? Perfectly judged, but De Ferran on the exit tries to get him on the way out of turn one, and they are side by side as they accelerate through the kick up towards turn three, and a restart again from Juan Montoya that would make you think that he's been doing rolling starts throughout his career instead of standing starts in Formula 3000 over the last few years. Absolutely brilliant. Couldn't have done it any better. He's out by a good interval. Green, green, green. This time they say it's go. Three wide into the first turn. Rest of the field follows. Montoya with a quick early move. Vassar fades to third. We have a race going on, and it is Juan Montoya and Kenny Breck who lead the round to take the green flag. We have a race, it might be 24 hours late, but we have a race underway here, and Montoya already steaming off into the distance. And look at that, behind Gilda Ferran making it three abreast with somebody trying to go around the outside. Montoya as the leader on the 87th lap. This was the restart. Montoya almost totally lost it as the green came out, and then certainly passed Tracy at the start-finish line and took up the lead. It was an awesome restart. Though. All right, we're going to put Montoya up in that box in the upper right-hand corner and watch him as we're ready to go to a restart. Gilda Ferran leads, then Moreno, Breck, Breck comes inside Moreno, lags back, now the green comes out. Breck tries to make a move on Moreno. Oof! Works on Michael Andretti. Why we never? Whoa, doesn't work on him. Just blows him away down the inside. Back at the front, DeFerrin begins to pull away just a bit. Goes right by Fernandez, no problem. And now he is up, beginning to challenge in that fight at the front. What a great set of moves for Montoya. Look at Montoya. They went five wide on the start. Montoya low. The Farron moved early. And then as the momentum came up for Montoya on the backstrap, Montoya and Michael. And the start. And they race horses. <laughs> you hear Chip Ganassi cheering his driver on.
Oh, this kid is good. So very, very good. Juan Montoya, his third race in the series, looks for his first career win. You're the man. You are the man. Ah, there you heard Chip get asked. You are the man. Great job. Great job. Oh, I'll without question, circle. the 39th winner in card history and the name oh, is Juan Montoya as he thanks the crew. Look at that. There's a happy Watch guy. <laughs> Just one lap to go for Juan Montoya. Here he comes, the Colombian, the 23-year-old from Bogota in Colombia, is going to take his second win in the Chat Car Series. Back-to-back -back victory for Juan Montoya for the Ganassi Racing Team. He comes up to cross the line. He's done it again. Wow, fantastic. This guy is a real star. Well, just one more lap for the Colombian and he is going to score a hat-trick of victories in the early season. What a way to start his champ car career. He comes up through turn number two along the back stretch, building up the speed once again to just over 215 miles per hour. The car has behaved impeccably this afternoon and he has driven superbly. He comes out of the final corner and Juan Montoya is going to do it. The championship leader coming into this race is going to extend his championship lead and Juan Montoya makes it a hat-trick of wins. The Ganassi team celebrate down in pit lane and this boy is a real revelation in the 1999 season. So the last two miles for Juan Montoya and he said after the first day of practice here you know he said I think I've found a new favorite racetrack well I think he's going to confirm that here this afternoon he has driven superbly in all kinds of conditions under pressure he was passed by Gilles de Ferran at one stage when the car wasn't going so well when the tires had lost grip but he didn't panic he didn't throw it in the wall he didn't crash into the Ferran he just kept his cool and waited until it came back to him and when the track dried out and they put the slicks back on this car he was right there again the restart was perfect he judged it absolutely right got past Gilles de Ferran on the run to the first corner made it look all so easy you wouldn't think that he's only done nine of these races. And that's, what, that's the thing that has impressed his race engineer, Morris Nunn, more than anything else. I mean, he knew his montages, he knows his capabilities, but really, really, really shines is on the restarts. He gets the most out of the tyre right away. And he comes across the line to take his fourth win of the year. And Chip Ganassi talking to him on the radio. What an achievement for Juan Montoya on one of the most demanding tracks of the schedule in some of the most difficult conditions we've seen for uh, several years in champ car racing. The concentration was there. He didn't make any mistakes. Montoya, the winner. It was 5.4 seconds. Now it's just over one second as Juan Montoya takes the white flag. Just one lap to go. Just the one lap then, and Juan Montoya will be coming through to take his fifth win of the season here in champ cars. And what a superb drive it has been today. He did not have it easy. It wasn't as if he started up front. He started from the fourth row of the grid. He got involved in a battle with Gilles de Ferran uh, early in the race. Could not make any progress, but he didn't do anything silly. Didn't throw it away. He waited until the first round of pit stops. The team then managed to get him up into third, combined with some rapid laps on cold tyres that he put in. He got up to third place, hunted down Paul Tracy, overtook Paul Tracy to take the lead when Frank Hitty came into the pit. And when they all settled down again after the pit stops, Montoya was able to pull away at a second a lap. 11.7 seconds his advantage the last time around. And Juan Montoya is heading for victory here at Mid-Ohio. This Colombian superstar is going to do it again here today in the sunshine of Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in front of an enthusiastic crowd of spectators. Beautiful, beautiful. Juan Montoya. You're the man. Great job today driving. He did a great job driving today. He wins here at Mid-Ohio. Is he going to take a record-breaking okay, sixth flag, win go, for go. a rookie in his first season? Juan Montoya is breaking all the records, and it looks as though he's going to break another record here today. He's going to win at his team owner's own racetrack, Chip Ganassi's racetrack here in Chicago, the brand-new facility, and it's Chip Ganassi's driver who is going to win here this afternoon. He's withstood all the pressure. He started 10th, but Juan Montoya takes the applause from the grandstand. Montoya wins it. You are the man, baby. You. And Chip Ganassi. Oh, thanks.
sky, beautiful people, beautiful everything. <laughs> And there you really hear the delight in Montoya's voice. He worked for that one and he really appreciates it. Vassa takes third from Max Pappis. Great battle between those two throughout this race. And Team Rail, pretty happy there. I think Bobby pleased with what his man did today. A fourth place finish. But Montoya, the winner, once again. Now, white flag. Watch for the white flag. Is it coming out? Yes, it is. It's just the one lap to go. And Montoya is heading for win number seven. Would you believe it this year? What an incredible season this Colombian has enjoyed. You again could see that car is sliding around a lot on those worn, wet tyres. It's amazing the movement, the difference when they're on worn wets to when they're on slicks. And Carpentier is desperate to hold on to second place. What a result this would be for Patrick Carpentier if he can stay ahead of Vassar. And especially to do it here on his home soil in Canada. He is going to hold off, uh, Jimmy, I believe. He's put in a great race. And of course, this is that contract drive we talked about. Vassar trying to chase him down. And it's a few turns left. Yes, and it looks as though Montoya has once again shown everybody how to do it. Franchini has caught up with Montermini, and now Magnussen. He's made up about four seconds on that group. Maybe he can get a couple of positions in the last few turns and really help him in the points battle. We'll keep an eye on that, but he is some four seconds behind Magnussen going onto this lap. But here comes the star of the show once again. It is Juan Montoya, the amazing Colombian, comes through to take another win in the 1999 FedEx Championship Series. Win number seven. Who can stop this man? He does it again, punches the air, and we wait for second place. The final lap for Juan Montoya, and he's heading for victory. He's going to join that list of names who won the Indy 500 one week, and then the Milwaukee Mile the following weekend. He's done it. He's going to come through and take his first win of 2000. Juan Montoya wins at Milwaukee in the postponed race. It finally comes together for the Ganassi team this year. Indy 500 victory last weekend. Milwaukee win this weekend. And don't count Montoya out for the championship now. Montoya, Andretti, Franchitti, now Carpentier to fourth. Casper Nevis and Fernandez battle for fifth. But the big fight is here at the front of the field. Will it play out this way? Will you be able to draft on that last lap down the backside? Let's see if Montoya can come back before the start finish stripe. Okay, it doesn't last look lap, like it. Last lap, one to go. Michael wanted the lead with one lap to go. I'm surprised at that. But Juan takes it back. Montoya down inside. Montoya takes the lead of the race. Carso Marquez, a slower car just ahead. Michael darts out on the back stretch. Michael tries to get it down inside. Montoya's going to stay right there on the outside. The slower car is just ahead. Montoya. Now Andretti, and they almost touched. They may have touched. The slower car is going to be a factor as Montoya brings him to the line. And Montoya takes the Michigan 500. What a finish. Four one hundredths of a second. Montoya over Michael. And Montoya's ninth career win. What a brilliant move. Michael Andretti thought he would box Montoya behind Marquez. Instead, Montoya picked up Marquez's draft and was able to use that to pull ahead of Michael Andretti. The timing couldn't have been any more perfect. The crowd now on their feet, Paul, as the white flag comes out. He has been so powerful on the ovals this year. He's going to do it again, Montoya. One more pass of the back stretch, and he will have his 10th career win in hand. And that's going to tie him for ninth on the all-time list. Rutherford, Sneva, Unser, those kind of names. Checkered flag. Praise the Lord. You're the man. You are the man. <laughs> A slight change for the mantra by Ganassi. And so P.J. Jones, by coming into the pits, it changes his physical position on the race course. He was just in front of Juan Montoya for a while. And Montoya, oh, Montoya loses it coming off of the corner as they're ready to come back to green, but the yellow flies. So as he unleashes 925 
it! Yes, it! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I don't like it, Paul, but you saw what happened. There's a bump there just as you come off the corner, and he got on the throttle just as he hit the bump. That was enough to upset the back of the car and turn around. But what was significant about that is he stood on the throttle to keep it spinning around. Almost, he was almost back up at the keyhole by the time he rejoined. Look at that. He was way, way off track. And that car's getting covered in more mud and dust. It was already looking pretty grubby after his spin into the ground. Today, all but one share a common goal. Beat the rookie. Stop Montoya. It was a beautiful day. Sun beat down. I had the radio walk. I was driving. Yeah, running down a dream. That never would come to me. Working on mystery. Going wherever it leads. Running down a dream. Juan Montoya a chance to make history here today but let me tell you there are plenty of veterans in this field that would prefer history remain as it is paul the entire paddock is upset that a rookie can step in and dominate this series every crew chief every team manager every crewman and especially the drivers want to stop juan montoya hey, stop montoya But Montoya fought back using every ounce of his talent and every inch of the racetrack. In qualifying yesterday, he earned his fourth pole of the season. There is no opportunity for testing in Cleveland, but Montoya already raced the circuit among his favorites. <laughs> Vamos a ver lo que pasó ahí en el momento cuando sale la última curva del circuito, la curva 13, ahí posando apenas. Como he hecho una pincelada de un artista. about the development of Montoya leading this race now at age 23 he's going to be a champion he is phenomenal as a race car driver uh, I didn't think anyone would be able to step up like Alex was uh, but this guy is going to be great how impressed have you been by what this young man has accomplished leading up to this race only his fifth in champ car history somebody came up to me this weekend in Brazil here and said he was the next Senna and uh, maybe they're not wrong no. this kid's amazing isn't he he really is By three points. This is exactly what we talked about earlier. Dario may be two laps down, but right now in ninth place. But Franchitti's on the pit road. Franchitti comes in. He takes the points lead for just a few seconds, and then comes in, Jan. Yeah, and we could tell from the crew they were telling us the truth all along. They just, they just looked like they knew they couldn't make it. And this could be the championship for Dario Franchitti gone away because he has to make this splash and go. He will also 
also only need fuel. They're not going to go for tires. They will do it as quickly as possible, but the fact that he's even here on pit road is going to make a huge difference. They had a substantial difference in fuel mileage between their first few stops and that last step, stop, Paul. Obviously, they went to full power, full boost. It just went for it, and it didn't work out. They pulled up well short of what we thought they could go in a much more conservative mode. Gary Gerald. The push for the championship becoming critical with four laps to go. Chip Ganassi now has become much like a jockey on a horse going to the whip as he talks to Juan Montoya. He says, you must get the position. You must get around Guzman. You've got to get it going. Right now on the big board, we see Juan in the fifth spot. Big Mo in front of him. Now the position changes on the board. Franchitti with the stop maintains the championship lead with Montoya in fourth. And Montoya with the move on Guzman goes to fourth. And they're tied. They are now tied. Three to go. With a tie situation, Montoya wins the championship. The other story, Fernandez, he's on point, he's the leader. Pappas is second. Can Fernandez go to the end? Fernandez across the line. Two to go. And of course, Montoya's got seven victories this year. Dario has three. When it comes to a tie, the driver with the most wins gets the nod, and that would be Juan Montoya. White flag next time around. One more lap to go in this season, and the battle is going to go down to that final lap. So Montoya has his fingertips on the PPG Cup at this moment. The white flag comes out for Adrian Fernandez. Rest of the field flashes under the white flag. Fernandez on the backside. Is the gamble about to pay off for Fernandez? Off of the final corner, Adrian Fernandez takes the win. The gamble pays off, and it's number five in his career for Adrian Fernandez. And here comes Montoya. Stay on it. Stay on it. And there he goes. You're the champion. He crosses you are the, the champion. Line just behind his rival, Frankiti. A chip set it. Juan Montoya, as a rookie, takes the championship. He owns the PPG Cup for the next year. El equipo Chip Ganassi. Y estamos a cinco kilos del final, cuenta regresiva, cuenta regresiva, solo cinco kilos nos restan entre la bandera cuadros, nos quedan cuatro con la bandera blanca, nos quedan cinco con la bandera cuadros, y bueno, lo importante es que no tengamos bandera amarilla, porque con esa diferencia, Montoya gana la carrera, cuatro para el final, cuatro, 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 concentrados todos, con el ánimo, con el corazón y con unas ganas de celebrar a Pit Ay, Butter, a Pit Butter, a Pit Butter, va por gasolina triste por final de carrera para Jimmy Butter triste, a ver Pablo si escuchamos la parada de Jimmy en Pit Sí, lo tengo un, un poquito voy a trasladarme hacia el lado de las allá ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa con Jimmy Butter? Con Montoya, lo que pasa es que nos van a restar tres vueltas más marcadas vuelta más rápida en carrera 2017.921 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 giros nos quedan tres giros para celebrar prepárenlo todo y celebrenlo con calma, con amor con los suyos, unámonos colombianos en torno a este nombre de este monstruo del automovilismo mundial, Juan Pablo Montoya estamos, estamos acercándonos a dos por favor, señor juez prepare esta bandera blanca porque necesitamos llegar a la bandera cuadro, Montoya viene y le van a quedar dos giros Curva número 4 para Juan Pablo, sale a la meta y al contrato adelante de él. Nos van a quedar dos, nos van a quedar dos, 
ahora dos, dos giros, dos giros, dos giros, dos giros, vamos Juan Pablo, vamos Juan Pablo, lo espera la bandera blanca y lo espera la bandera cuadros para celebrar este triunfo aquí en Indianápolis. Juan Pablo Montoya, 24 años, bogotano, campeón de la Fórmula 3000 Internacional, campeón de la CAR en el año 1999 y una mano de triunfos en el automovilismo y en el cartismo porque se hizo como cartista. No va a quedar una. Bandera blanca, bandera blanca. Último, último giro de Juan Pablo Montoya, nuestro colombiano. Nos vamos a celebrar, nos vamos a celebrar. Viene Juan Pablo Montoya, último giro con tráfico por bailar más rápido. El giro de escalera Pony, los 118, 491 en este momento. Pero no hay problema, no le llega. Y Juan Pablo, tranquilo, en procura del triunfo aquí. Va a desembocar ya. Curva número 3. Curva número 3, Juan Pablo. Celebremos, celebremos. Es tuyo, Colombia. Juan Pablo Montoya va a recibir la bandera cuadro, ganador, ganador, Juan Pablo Montoya, Colombia, 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 celebrémoslo, Colombia, Juan Pablo Montoya. Ahí está tu hijo colombiano, ahí está tu hijo colombiano, este ídolo, esta victoria, Felipe, hombre, en este día triste, pero Felipe, también felicitarlo a usted. Pablo, 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 Pablo. Ahí oye en la gritadera. Pablo, que es el hijo de este campeón. Ahora sí hable usted, el papá de este monstruo. Pues hermano, ¿qué puedo decir? Imagínense, no tengo palabras para mencionar. Bueno, ahí está la celebración y les dejamos escuchar la conversación de Chip, el grito de este colombiano. Chip, congratulations, you just won the Indianapolis 500 and uh, uh, I'm not sure that uh, there's been a more dominating performance from what we saw from Juan Montoya today. It's unbelievable, he's the best driver in the world right now, the best driver in the world, it's that simple. What's it mean to you to come here on a basically a one race situation and win the race? Uh, it's, it's the biggest moment of my life right now, I can tell you. Y ya nos quedamos. A ver, Pablo. Ustedes oyeron, Chip le dijo, usted en este momento es el piloto más importante del mundo. Eh, Juan Pablo, ahí está Juan Pablo. ¡Feliz, feliz! ¡Qué alegría! ¡Qué alegría, por Dios! Juan Pablo Montoya llega a este círculo exclusivo donde ha estado Jim Clark, donde ha estado Andretti, donde ha estado Emerson Fittipaldi, el único suramericano y ahora el segundo suramericano en 84 años de historia. Se llama Colombia, se llama Juan Pablo Montoya, unidos Caracol Radio. Canal Caracol, RTI Televisión en vivo y en directo y qué gusto entregarles y cantarles esta victoria del colombiano Juan Pablo Montoya, quien es acompañado, todos quieren celebrar con él. Ese es el círculo exclusivo donde llegan únicamente los grandes, los grandes del automovilismo mundial. Dan los aplausos. Sí, hermano. Sí, sí, hermano. Llego. Sí, voy para allá. Y Pablo va a estar al lado de su hijo. Y ahí está Gancho. Gonzalo Mejía está al lado. Y ahí corre Pablo. Y está Jonathan, Jonathan Williams, el hijo de Frank Williams, está corriendo también para ir a abrazar a su pupilo, a su amigo, porque lo quieren mucho. Y ahí viene la celebración en el círculo de la victoria. Y a tomar leche, mijito, que se la merece. Este es nuestro negrito colombiano. La emoción grande, la emoción grande, Colombia, Juan Pablo Montoya, escuchémoslo. I'm so happy, you know, all the guys at Target, Budweiser, all sponsors did a great job, and just so happy. And there is the traditional swig of milk. Le agradece Juan Pablo a sus patrocinadores, se ponen las gafas en este momento. Oh, it was good, you know. The only time I was a bit scared is when the deer got close to me. 
and at that time I thought, you know, it's going to be difficult. But I understood I could pull away from him, and I tried so hard. Solo tuvo un momento en el que estuvo preocupado. Last couple of laps.